Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I would like to show you GPT Pilot and how to install this on Windows correctly using the VS Code extension. GPT Pilot is an AI coding assistant like many covered on the channel. It's reminiscent of MetaGPT in that it applies project and documentation logic to the development process, and this I like. GPT Pilot allows you to build full stack applications in multiple languages or development frameworks. As a benchmark, I test most of these AI coding assistants with the Snake Game Challenge. GPT Pilot came out tops. Have a look at the Snake Game with full game logic implemented. This was very impressive. Let's set up GPT Pilot on a PC, and afterwards I will take you through the Snake Game's development. To set up GPT Pilot, you must pre install the following required software. First, download and install Git. You can install Git and accept all the defaults. Then, download the latest Python, and when the installer launches, make sure you select this checkbox to add Python to your path. And lastly, download and install VS Code. This is going to be our interface into GPT Pilot. Those are the minimum required software you must have to continue. If you are going to do serious development work, then at this point you also want to install your dev tools like Node, Compilers, Visual Studio and its supported tools. And that will unleash the full potential of GPT Pilot. With everything installed, open VS Code, click on the extensions icon and in the search window, type gpt Pilot. Select and install the GPT Pilot extension. Wait for it to pop up on the left hand side. Click on the GPT Pilot extension icon. But before you open it, let's first create a project folder for GPT Pilot on the local PC. And here you can create any folder as long as you do not call this folder GPT Pilot. This will just break the install and you'll be stuck on this screen, and that's just bad. Now that we've created a folder, let's add back to the interface. Now click on Open GPT Pilot, then click Anywhere. Wait for this pop-up and select your project folder that you just created. Here, just be patient. After you selected the project folder, the install will be triggered in the background. If you quickly open your project folder in Explorer, you will see these movements happening. Now back in the interface, you can basically sit on this screen until you receive this pop-up. You will see hard drive activity the whole time until this appears. This will indicate that the install is now complete and you can now sign up or sign in to GPT Pilot. And yes, if you want to use the extension without compiling on your local PC, you will have to sign up. More info about that can be found here. Make sure you save your password. There's no easy way to reset it from here. After sign up or sign in, you'll be presented with this settings screen. You will need an OpenAI API key. If you don't know how to create OpenAI API keys, have a look at this video on our channel. Click on settings, insert your API key, and also make sure the settings correctly detected your selected project folder. If everything is correct, click Save. Now you're in a position to commission your first project. Let me show you some tips and lessons learned in developing my Snake game and show you this iterative design process in action. Click on Create New App. Then give your project an appropriate name. Now this is the important part. You want to be as specific as possible with the prompt used to formulate the program. Now in my case, the prompt reads, Create the snake game. The snake must be green. The snake must be controlled by the arrows on the keyboard. The snake must have food. If the snake eats a food item, the food item disappears and is replaced with a new food item on a random location on the screen. The food item must be red in color. When the snake eats a food item, the snake's length must double each time. The game must run on a black background. The game is over if the player crashes the snake into the snake's own body. The game should run full screen with boundaries at the edges of the screen. The game is over if the snake crashes into the screen boundaries. The game should run in a simple web page. 
and the game should work and be tested by only clicking the web page that opens the game. Let's submit this prompt. This will move the development to the environmental setup. It will start by planning the project's required architecture, as you can see here on the screen. Now with the environment set up, it will next produce an action plan for development. Again, have a look at the planning on the screen. The actual development now starts. It will start spitting out code and begin the assembly of my game. As we proceed into the process, it will ask for human intervention. Here is an example of the iterative dev process. It's telling me the initial page has been created. The system wants me to verify the file and that we have a black canvas as a game board background. I will open the project folder and in the workspace folder I will find my game. When opening the file, I can confirm the game background. Everything looks good and on track. Let's ask the system to proceed with the development. And after producing lots more code, it's asking me to verify progress. It's asking me to open the file again and verify that we have a snake and that we have food on the screen. And have a look at this. We almost have a working game already. Everything is looking on track and to expectation. And the system will continue with this process until we end up with a final working product. And when your program is complete, GPT Pilot offers the ability to open that project again and make changes. This is super handy for extensive task or development work that will take too much time to finish in a single sitting. This feature allows you to edit finalized projects or to continue from where you stopped last in a project. And hopefully this covers the basics of installing and developing with GPT Pilot. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, consider giving us a thumbs up, leaving a comment or subscribing to our channel. And please keep an eye on our channel for future AI and technology videos.